True Ribbon tweeters. So we saw it on one of my favorite speakers of all time, the Alta Audio speakers, starting around $5,000 for the Alta Audio speaker line. But, you know, we have a speaker behind me that is also a True Ribbon speaker design, the Quad S2s for $1,200, which is significantly less than even the most affordable Alta Audio speaker. And even compared to a lot of the speakers out there that has True Ribbon tweeters in them, this is in the affordable category of things. So how does this speaker sound? Is True Ribbon tweeters as good as people say? Is it the most transparent, the most airy? And it's all, you know, true about the True Ribbon design, no pun intended. Well, you came to the right place because I'm about to share with you my experience of these speakers to the fullest. So without further ado, let's roll the intro. So as you see here, this is a two-way speaker with a woofer that is pretty minimal in size and also the main selling point of the speaker, the True Ribbon Tweeter design. Well, this speaker is a pretty compact, what I would call a mini monitor. And the specs, I believe, says around 45 hertz in terms of its uh, lower end extension, which means that it doesn't have a tremendous amount of bass that's gonna rock your room to begin with. However, when I first got these speakers in, I was immensely, immensely disappointed. And the reason being was because I had them out into the room about three, four foot feet. And in this position, there was almost no bass. It was all treble and upper mid-range. The mid-range was a little bit pulled back and there was no presence in the mid-bass region and the lower extension was like non-existent. And so I was very disappointed and I, was, I thought to myself, well, if you're gonna play this speaker, you're gonna need a subwoofer. That was my first conclusion. However, however, when I put these speakers where they should be as a mini monitor, uh, as most people should, a little bit against the wall, about 1.5 or one foot off the wall, even closer, now you get some room gain. So once I put them closer to the wall, I had tremendous amount of bass. Now, is this going to give you like room rumbling, you know, Bacard S400 floor standard amount of bass when you put it close to the wall? No, but what it will give you is a very satisfying tight bass presentation. That is enough. Now I say enough for my standards, but even for my standards, I would say I would want a little bit more mid bass punch. It is very tight, however, it is a very tight punch. So for example, when I play a track like this, I get a very, very tasteful, you know, it's very tight. Um, and this track has that, you know, in the beginning of the, the track, it just goes. Same thing with tracks like Dead Mouse, which has a lot of mid bass punch. Very clean, attack and decay. There is no uh, gain. It's not like the Sonos Faber Electamator 3s or the Bucard S 400s that has a mid bass boost that gives you that kind of oomph, right? This doesn't have that oomph, but it has a very tight, like almost like a pistol kind of uh, bass in the mid bass region. Now, when it comes to lower presence, lower extension, I wouldn't call it extension because it doesn't extend as low as, you know, like 30 Hertz or even truly 40 Hertz in my opinion, that rumbles the foundation of my place. It doesn't do that. However, when the track has the lower end extension, for example, in the track In My Secret Life by Leonard Cohen, these tracks have the lower end presence. So it's a, it's a fill effect, right? So when the studio engineers mix and master, they put a fill in. So you hear the ambience, you hear the lower extension and it's full sounding, it is room uh, it, it fills your room. I would say about small to medium sized rooms, this speaker will still fill in those lower extensions. However, it's not gonna dig deep again. It's not going to rumble your space or give you this full bodied enveloping, you know, bodily experience that you feel in your chest. It's not going to do that. And you shouldn't expect that from a mini monitor this size anyways. So what these speakers are good at is actually the high frequency extension 
and the mid-range articulation. For the price of $1,200, it competes in my opinion with the likes of Magical and Focal in terms of the high-end you know, detail retrieval. It is very nuanced in the high frequency and it's able to give you a lot of detail for your money if you like that. Now for me, I am more about the entire musical presentation rather than hearing every little thing in the music, uh, so to speak. So for me, I do appreciate the amount of detail and these things that this speaker can do. It has a lot of air, it has a lot of detail. However, for my personal preference, I did not care for the overall presentation because the mid-range sounds rather thin sounding to me. And I think the speaker that resembles it most closely to this overall high frequency air and articulation and presentation is quite frankly a speaker that costs a heaps amount more which is the ELAC Vela 403 speakers that I loved so much. It's not like the Alta Audios. The Alta Audio ribbon speakers are nothing like the Quad S2s behind me. The Alta Audios are laid back speakers despite being a ribbon design, while the Quad S2s in my opinion is a more forward sounding, more engaging sounding on the top end frequencies for those that like that kind of detail and a little bit of a brighter presentation. Now these speakers are not just about detail with a true ribbon design, it is quite impressive in the sound stage it projects. The sound stage was quite a bit larger than I ever imagined for a speaker that had a true ribbon design. Now for ribbon designs, usually they are very directional. So that's one of the caveats of a ribbon design is that they're very directional. Now this speaker, I didn't find it so and I was quite surprised to find that, you know, it wasn't as directional as I thought it would. In fact, if I put it side by side with a normal soft dome or a metal dome tweeter, I would say that these speakers are pretty on the same page in terms of directivity. So what does that mean? Well, usually ribbon designs suffer from, a, you know, a little bit of a smaller sound stage. While these speakers actually throw an enormous sound stage, as a lot of mini monitors will, these speakers do exactly that. It throws an enormous sound stage that actually stretches out of my room, which is impressive and fun to hear. Now, another thing that is impressive is that the spatial cues inside the music, inside the imaging, uh, is very, very good. It can hear and almost draw out even you know, the smallest instruments and bells in the music and it has very good center imaging. Now, a little bit about that center imaging. Now, remember how I said that ribbon tweeters are usually very directional. So that means that you normally have to tilt the speakers uh, directly towards your ears. So I have these directly told into my ears in a triangle formation. And at this moment, I hated these speakers. In this formation, I hated these speakers because I couldn't listen to it more than 30 minutes at a time. And the reason being was the vocal sibilances. So we're talking about those vocal sibilance was just absolutely terrible. I hated these speakers right off the bat. However, I experimented. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna throw them a little bit out into the room. And I, my final positioning with these speakers was them facing straight out into the room and not towards me. And even then, the center imaging was great, which is odd because, you know, ribbon tweeters, they're known for that directional sound. Well, these speakers seem to have somehow avoided that because sorcery magic or something, because it sounds very, very good in terms of center imaging, even when uh, towed out into the room. Now, even when it's towed out into the room, the vocal sibilances are just there, but it's not too excessive. Uh, as when I had them towed directly towards me. Now notice how I said not too excessive, not too excessive. That's a key point here. Because I think that most people, right, that like a little bit of a brighter presentation would be perfectly fine and, you know, appreciate the balance here. But for me, it's, it was still too much, even with the speakers towed out into the room. Now, I want to emphasize that not all vocal sibilances are bad. In fact, a little bit of vocal sibilance gives you realism. Because when you, someone says s or t, there is some articulation to go with it. But in some cases, like with the Quad S2, I found it just to be a little bit too bright, too much for my liking. The decay was just way too long and not snappy enough in those s's and t's. So for example, when I play this track, Church Bell, it, it's called Church Bell because uh, she literally sings Church Bell. And when she says ch, ch, it, it gives you a very piercing ch. 
um, and I did not like that whatsoever. Same thing goes for tracks that has those kind of vocal sibilances, like in My Secret Life by Leonard Cohen. Again, in this track, I wrote some few notes here. Uh, again, instruments sound detailed and pure. So instruments that have no problems, like instruments, bells sound so pure and so right. It, 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 when the bell rings, it goes tring, and it's just very sweet, very sweet sounding. I love it. However, when I, when I hear things like, I miss you so much, you know, it's like so, you know, so, so much, you know, it, it's just too much. Yeah. That's what it is, too much. And you know, still making love, still, still. You know, it doesn't miss a beat. Every time I hear those s and t's and much, you know, ch, it, it just too much of a, too much of a spit. It's just a little bit too much of vocal sibilance. And when I play these tracks, I know these tracks very well. I played it with other speakers and it didn't have this problem. So this is not just the tracks as far as my experience goes. Again, your mileage may vary, this is just my experience. Now, same thing goes with a track that I really, really like, which is Hande. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It is a German version of Hands. And this track has very beautiful instruments and vocals, and it's a full body presentation. So this track has everything from low frequency to high frequency. And if your speakers have it, then the low frequency will be there. So there is some warmth that is added to the mid range and there is a bit of smoothness going on, but you know, the vocals are just sweet and fine sounding until those, you know, German words hit and you just hear all the s and the tss, you know, it, it, it becomes very fatiguing very quickly and unenjoyable. And especially at loud volumes, if you play at loud volumes, such as myself from time to time, it's just not a very enjoyable experience because it is just so piercing at those higher levels of uh, music playing. So again, with instruments, you know, it has very good displacements. So it has, you know, great uh, sense of scale for classical music, piano, bells, whistles, chimes, whatever you, whatever instrument. It sounds pure and really delicate and very, very all all around realistic to me in the high frequency, uh, you know, detail kind of domain. Now in terms of gear matching, I wouldn't say that these require a lot of power. I would say that these require, uh, you know, about 100 watts, um, which is pretty common these days. But, but these are sensitive in terms of, again, you might have guessed it, to the sound signature of the amplifier itself, because the speaker itself takes on a little bit of a more forward approach in the higher frequencies. You want something that has something that's more warmer sounding in terms of the amplification. So the for the most part, um, right now I have the Dana Fripps uh, stack right here that I reviewed recently, the Hades. Yeah, Hades, is that how you say it? Yeah, Hades, which I butchered in my, <laughs> in my review, the name, and the Thalo. Now these, these are a very good combination in terms of warmth and body. I, like I said, it has a lot of grip in the bottom end. The high frequencies are relatively smooth sounding. So this is one of the warmest sounding amplifiers I have in my space right now. So that's what I enjoyed it with the most. Um, however, Iota VX stack also works, which I tried as well. The high frequency is a little bit less refined. It does have that you know, bottom grip, but again, the mid range texture and the high frequency is a little bit more less refined with this particular stack, which is again, a more reasonable stack to go with the Quad S2s. Now another unit that I actually enjoyed is actually uh, something that is not out into the market yet. It's actually a little bit of a shameless plugin, but it is true. I tried it with my uh, funk amplifier. Now this is a special edition that is not out yet and it's going to be only limited to 100 units once it's out and there will be a separate video on it, but I had to include it in this video because when I tried this unit with the Quad S2s, it was actually quite pleasant in terms of high frequency and it was quite bearable in terms of the vocal sibilances as well when they had the speakers tilted out towards the room, uh, not directly at me. When it's directly at me, there's no helping it. Now with the Burson Funk J Special Edition, this uh, was a very good combination and let me explain why. Because the tuning of the Burson Funk Special Edition is different from the original funk. Now the original funk had a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a brighter frequency on the top end, just a smidge that was a little bit unrefined as per my review. But this one now has a little bit more current added and also it has a little bit more of a warmer sound signature as requested by me for the tuning section. 
So this, these funks are tuned to be warmer sounding and more luscious sounding, so it was a great match to the Quad S2s. So again, streamless plug-in, but it is true, it was one of the best combinations with the Quad S2s, despite the lower price range of the Burson Funk. So all in all, my favorite combination was actually with the Hades and Thalo, and then followed by Burson Funk, and then the IOTA VX stack. So that's pretty much it, that's all I have to share with you in terms of these speakers. But you know, it wasn't really to my liking in terms of my personal preference. However, I would say that you know, for people that are looking for a very detailed presentation, that is looking for like the Eli Vela presentation, or uh, you know, kind of like a focal or magical, you know, detailed presentation on the top frequencies, but don't quite have the budget for those kind of speakers, then I think these speakers do an extremely good job and almost on an equal grounding, I should say, um, except for that a lot of vocal sibilance problem that can be, you know, like I said, tamed with towing the speakers out into the room a little bit and proper pairing of amplification, it could be acceptable. Much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one.